I haven't done a video in a while, so it's about time. So I just got this new phone. It's an LG V30. And they say that it's like one of the best, best, best cell phone cameras for pictures and video that there is. So I decided, you know, I can't, I don't have an iPhone, I don't have a Samsung, I don't have all those other fancy phones, so I can't compare it to them. So why don't I just like compare it to something I do have, a DSLR camera. The one that I have is a Nikon D500, and I want, I'm gonna walk around here, Key West, I'm in Key West, that's where I live, and I will walk around taking some pictures in RAW and actually compare how uh, they perform with each other, and I'll probably also do another video for video shooting and see how, how that works and the differences. So I'll show you what I have. So in the bag we have the Nikon D500. So I will be shooting with two lenses with the DSLR. Um, on it right now I have the Sigma 17-50 to and I, I looked it up and apparently the LG V30 has two lenses of course in the back and one is around 10 and a half the other one is around 26, so I'll try to compare them the best I can. And there is the 11 to 16 lens that I will use compare the wide lens that's on the V30. And here is the V30, a very, very lovely phone. I've been having a great time with it. It's nice and responsive, and the pictures are really cool. It's nice having a wide lens on it. And there are both lenses. Take a close look. Take a closer look. Take a closer look. Oh. Damn, it does focus. Okay. So, I guess we'll begin walking around with the cameras. The first lens I have on the camera is the 11 to 16, because I want to try the wide lens. We'll see how it works. Let's go find something around here to take a picture of. Oh, look, houses, historic building. Let's go over there. This is the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter 2.8. I have it. At at those settings as you can see and I think this is a pretty good composition and I'm, I'm gonna try to get just about the exact same thing I think they're very similar focal lengths and this and the cell phone so let's go ahead and snap this one now here in the cell phone one thing that I had to do is show that I want to save as raw as well and that's in the standard stock um, camera app which oh my god is pretty cool I'm in manual mode and it doesn't let me change the aperture though so I had to raise the shutter speed a bit higher than the other one because the other one I wanted to do f8 here I'm at f1.9 so this looks a little bit wider all right let's go ahead and take it clearly I missed a little bit I aimed the cell phone a little bit higher and yeah this reflective screen it's a, like intense reflectiveness and it's driving me nuts but um, it is still very clear. It's got a very high res screen. So they're very similar looking right here. Can't wait to get them back in the studio. This will sort of show me how well the raw files from both can keep the skies. There's a little bit of blue up there, not much, but there should be some more behind that palm tree, which, oh, well this camera does it pretty good, huh? This is Onyx 100. So yeah, let's give this shot a try as well. Doing this all with one hand is sort of like taking a selfie, contorting your hand to get that position. Ah. Hold still. Okay, got it. That's a few shots using the wide lens. I don't know if I'll find any more wide stuff. Let's just get a few more. We don't want this to be a super long video. Uh, we're moving away from that building, and let's go find something else to take a picture of. Maybe some animals or chickens or something. Who knows? See, with with the little camera, I won't be able to take any pictures of them real close like this, so I'll have to like get as close to them as possible to get any kind of shot. So that's sort of where like this kind of camera starts to not be as useful because you can't really zoom in that much, and if you, if you do, you start to lose quality. I have a tree. I think this might be a good use for the wide lens again. Let's try this out. What do we have here? Missed a tree. Let's do this. This camera does seem to have a bunch more distortion than the other lens, that's for sure, but 
you could sort of imagine that since you're squeezing so much so much area in such small lens. So let's do this. I'm also going to take a picture of the roots too. That's pretty interesting. It's pretty much impossible not to get any cars in your picture in this case, I guess. So it is what it is. Let's take this picture. This will be around the same. Right there. It's going to be really interesting to see how the raw files compare. I better not step on my phone. It's a very expensive phone. Alright, I want to do a picture with the normal lens. I guess it's like, like around 26 millimeters. So I'm going to hope. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the lens on the DSLR to my Sigma 18 to 50, 17 to 50. Okay, this is sort of irresistible. Let's take a picture in here. There's chickens. You're not supposed to be there, but this fence is not really there. So, whoops! I'm such a weirdo, right? That's with the normal lens, supposedly at 26 millimeters. So I'll try to match it with this one. So with this camera, I actually raised the shutter speed and lowered the aperture, sort of just to make a point that you can get some really much better bokeh with these bigger sensors. Take that, little cell phone cameras. I know people have been thinking, so how can you be in Key West and not take one picture of the ocean? So yes, I came here to the ocean. Wow. Yeah, a lot of seaweed going on. Let's just do it from right here. Now I'm gonna do this with, I guess, the 26 millimeter lens. It's also, that lens also has the most megapixels out of all of them, out of the both of them. It has, I think, 20, oh, 16 megapixels, the other one's 12. All right, this looks, I'm actually gonna make it a tiny bit darker here. There we go, so we make sure to keep all the details we can in the clouds. And let's do this, 3200 auto, go. This camera is around 26 millimeters. Focus. And shoot. I think I'm around there. So I'm gonna get back to the studio, and I'm gonna edit them, and then I'll go ahead and just place them in a little slideshow, so you can just see how they look and compare for yourself and see what you like. That's the D500 versus my LG V30 cell phone, comparing with both the wide lens and the, the regular main lens, which is around 26 millimeters. So here we are. We are here on my screen, which is being recorded, and I've got the pictures up on Lightroom, and we're going to take a look at how they look when you edit the colors, make changes, and how they look all the way zoomed in. So here we are. We've got here on the left is the DSLR. On the right is the uh, V30. So let's, first of all, I'm curious, how does it look when we zoom in? Is it crisp? Is it good? So let's go in to these two. And the first thing that you notice is, you know, to be honest, for zooming in that much, it's not that far off for both. Of course, um, there is certain mushiness when you put them both together. And, and also, the V30 has a 16 megapixel sensor, and the DSLR has a 20 megapixel, sen 20, 20 megapixel sensor. Blah. And you sort of see, the, you know, you get some more detail in lots of different ways. So let's go ahead and go to develop and see what we can pull out of these and how we can make them look. So with these two quick edits, which one looks better to you? Now, um, in this, in the D500's picture, it does let me go to the um, enable profile correction, whereas in the this one does not let me because it doesn't know what the camera is so the lens it doesn't know what, what in the world to choose and I don't know what in the world to choose either to be honest so I, I can't really fix it but there they are right next to each other and here I'll play them full screen and, and here we're, let's zoom in a little bit see what they look like 
let's do the pixel peeping thing. So, that much better. A lot better, a lot better, a lot better. You know, it's, it's definitely sharper, the lens is better, you have more detail, less noise. But when you zoom out and look at it as a picture, these two are really similar. That's a cell phone on the left. All right, let's go to the next picture. There, so we have the cell phone on the left, D500 on the right. Of course, I can't, I don't, can't do this lens correction, so I'll just go up to the normal stuff. Otto, what do you got for me? I don't know, I'm sort of liking the, the colors and stuff in the cell phone better. But that probably just has to do with some more clarity and more saturation. Yeah, see, there it is, not there. No, they're more similar. I'll take out some of this blue. Which one do you think is better? We have the cell phone on the left and the DSLR on the right. Zoom in example. Of course, much more sharpness and detail in the DSLR picture, but cell phone is not bad. Look at the how nice those windows are. I think that's the same window. Yeah, just a little bit more noise, and so on. But these are not bad. Next. So here we have the picture of this street with the family of chickens. Both are sort of overexposed, so I'm going to fix them both. The DSLR gave it a very, very blue white balance. Very blue. So let's change that a little bit. Because the cell phone's doing pretty good on this one. Not when it comes to, I guess, total clarity. This is... These chickens are much sharper than these chickens, but they're looking pretty good. They're just bluer. Everything's so much bluer in this picture. There, I guess that's sort of similar. There's a little bit more green in the other one. Not that much, though. So it's not the best composed picture in the world, but which one of these looks better to you? The left is from the cell phone. The right is from my D500. And yes, we were zooming into stuff as well. And there's how that car looks, the difference. Um, you see quite a bit less of dynamic range in the cell phone's picture. You see the, the, the DSLR handles these highlights way better, even when it gets even brighter. Yeah, see that? So much better with those colors. But as far as, you know, sharpness, not too bad. They're both sort of around the same size and stuff. Actually, what happened on this picture on the right in the DSLR, I put it in to a 1.3 croc mode so I can zoom in a little more because I had a totally wide lens on there. And that's why they're around the similar size now. And that actually helps us compare a little better. But yeah, you do see more detail here in the leaves, not that much more, but you see some more detail. What else in these? Let's look at the stop sign. And those trees over there. Here's another dynamic range difference. You see a little bit more of that wood there than over here in a cell phone. But to be honest, and he, I guess up here in the leaves as well. Up in those leaves. Yeah definitely see more detail in DSLR but thinking about you know little tiny cell phone sensor it's like yeah it's doing really really good and this is I don't this isn't the the super wide this is the the 16 megapixel normal sensor which is supposedly the better camera for that so I guess yeah this one this camera has a lot less noise and all that stuff it's better than the very wide 12 megapixel uh, sensor on the other side. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to this one. There we go. Now we have the cell phone on the right, the SLR on the left. So I guess I'll edit the cell phone first. And the first thing you notice is a whole lot more 
like um, lens flaring and stuff, it's handling looking into the sky not as good. Getting all blurry and stuff. I want to retrieve as. Oh wow, look! In the DSLR, we do get those clouds, so I can possibly include them in the picture somehow. So the co colors are about the same, the branches look nearly the same. When you zoom in and, for example, look at this stick. Yeah, a little bit more detail and stuff. The cell phone's doing pretty good. But I guess the, the bigger difference here is two things. The lens, which is a bit more detailed than the DSLR. And the dynamic range, which is... Oh, look at all that noise in the branch. Now let's scroll down here. Yeah, there's so much more detail in the building here, but they're exposed around the same. And yeah, there's all that noise I have to deal with in the cell phone. But if you look at them next to each other, you know, you don't see that much of a difference. Very impressive performance for that cell phone. Next picture, the roots. So here we are looking at the cell phone on the right. And I guess the compare and you know it fits a lot more for some reason because it has a four thirds ratio instead of a I think I don't know what ratio that is for the DSLR. But let's work on this. Instantly, pretty close. Let's add some color. Oh. So I can I can save that house back there. Look. You can see a little bit more details in the house. You can't really tell because of the framing of the picture and stuff. But here is DSLR. There is the cell phone. Let's zoom into the roots. I guess the yeah, the biggest difference is in like for big bigger prints. Not that the D five hundred is a huge resolution sensor that can print like walls like the freaking D850 but this is you know still a tell telling difference the megapixels do make a difference now but only when you zoom in when you zoom out how many people are gonna know the difference between this picture and that picture not too many okay next picture I have that the no trespassing sign that I just had to go and and this is where I start to really illustrate the difference of what you can get with a DSLR and the little tiny cell phone camera okay this is using my 2.8 17 to 50 so you know I zoomed into around the same focal length as used over here in the cell phone camera but I turned the aperture way down to 2.8 and I got a little blur in the background which you totally can't do with a smaller sensor, but let's go ahead and edit the colors and make them similar. Which one looks better to you? Hey cell phone. Which one looks better to you? There's, you can see more chickens in this one, that's for sure. But let's go ahead and zoom into the no trespassing sign. Oh my goodness, what a difference. Now I, I must have been moving the, the um, camera a little bit, but look at the difference in sharpness, holy cow. But it's sharper, I think this was, the cell phone was focused on the grass, that's what was going on, when it was supposed to be focused on this sign. So the grass is much sharper than the sign. The cell phone doesn't know what to shoot for, but the cell phone, the, the camera certainly does. Look at that sharpness, you can read freaking, that little tiny Ohio thing there. So here, which picture do you like better? Cell phone or the DSLR, the D500? Now, let's go to the next and last picture. These actually look extremely, extremely similar. So let's go ahead and edit. First is the cell phone picture. I don't know, which one do I like better? I guess you would you would say like in the clouds you see a bit more detail in the DSLR but to be honest the cell phone picture looks really really nice let's zoom into this sign for example it's 
geez, sort of makes me think I should have put the DSLR on F8. Because the cell phone's looking better here. Definitely is. I just, I just shot it wrong. My bad. That cell phone's looking good. So let's zoom over to the right to the other side and see how it looks. Of course it was a different shot. There's different people there. But wow, this is, you know, proper lighting, lots of nice brightness, and the cell phone looks really nice in this picture, in all aspects. Which one do you like better, the cell phone or the Nikon D500, even though I probably got a little bit blurry of a picture. So um, I guess this is where I'll leave it, I guess I'll just scroll these pictures. Alright, so thank you for joining me in this video. Hope this was fun to check out the differences and the comparison between a $800 cell phone and a $2,000 camera and all the lenses that come with it and the huge package. Of course, we don't have as much telephoto capability with the cell phone camera and it might not print as good in, you know, it's in most situations to be bigger, but this is, you know, pretty good. I'm very happy with this cell phone camera and it's, it'll be nice for me to have. Thank goodness I got it. Let me know what you think. What's better for you? What's more convenient? What would you rather shoot with? Alright, thank you all. Bye.